The first thing is to look at the social construction of the environment in big frameworks. Um, different social constructions and reconstructions of the history of Easter Island. Heard of Easter Island? The original name, Rapanui. It is way in the Pacific Ocean, uh, off Chile. Very isolated from many places in the world. European travelers arrived in Rapa Nui, which they called Easter Island because they landed on Easter Day. And they landed in the 1700s. In Easter Island, they found a people who were cannibals. They were eating each other. They were very poor. The entire island was without trees. So they didn't understand how these people arrived on this island. Here is Rapa Nui from the air now. And as you can see, there's no trees. These trees have been planted in the past 20 or 30 years. But mostly, it's an island without trees. Here is the, one of the many volcanoes at Rapa Nui. Even within the volcano, just completely desolate. Uh, very few trees, only a few trees planted around the one modern city that has grown up on Rapa Nui. What Rapa Nui is famous for are these statues. These are the Easter Island statues. And people coming to these islands in the 1700s were shocked. They did not understand how these people who did not have the wheel, they did not have boats, they were living in small tribes. How did they have the social organization at one time to build these massive things and move them across the land because there's no trees, there's no wheel. See, and it just looks like a bunch of desolate statues mysteriously stuck on an island. No trees, very few. That's the scale of them. They're buried in the soil now because they've been there for centuries. Um, here is uh, some of them. One of them, uh, not this one. Some of them have top knots, so that was inside. But um, people wondered how this how did these very poor cannibals make a civilization which could construct these beautiful works of art and then totally disappear? So my point is, what construction do you place on this image? One construct is in this book from 1991. He argued that the use of wood in transporting the statues was the reason for deforestation. He's, of course, he, Clyde Ponty, has never been in the 1700s. He could never have seen this for himself, but he constructed a story saying that humans deforested the area intentionally, and that led to the collapse of the statue carving system. Another construct, number two, Paul Baum and John Finley, on another book called Easter Island, Earth Island, they said uh, they were destroying the trees for canoe building. So this is a different a different construct of why it's happened. Number three, they also think that humans are not responsible. Most people who talk about Easter Island use Easter Island as the idea that humans create environmental problems and create ecocide, the destruction of the environment with themselves. But, Bond and Finley argue, no, humans didn't do this. It was the inadvertent creation of a good place for rats, rodents, they soon arrived with the Polynesians, which were a food item for the Polynesians. And the rats likely prevented the regeneration of the trees. So it's not human's fault. Another person, number four, he says, uh, Grant McCall, in a book called Rapid and Weed, Tradition and Survival, says that the Polynesians stopped carving statues because of population growth. Ah, so here's a construct of Malthusianism, that population growth led to environmental collapse. Also, changes in weather patterns cause food shortages. McCall thus presents an alternative interpretation that does not imply that the natives were too stupid to realize they were running out of wood, that it was climate change causing this, and it's not human's fault that they destroyed their society. And then a fifth example, Someone constructing this idea by looking at pollen 
uh, radiocarbon dates associated with human activities in, in these areas. And as the period of statue construction peaked around 1200 to 1500, and with few statues erected afterwards. Densities of archaeological sites suggest a large population, an estimate of 7,000 people is widely quoted by archaeologists, but other estimates range up to 20,000. So Diamond's arguing for Malthusianism, that people, population growth, uh, caused environmental collapse. Notice they're all talking about the same island, but they have very different stories about this island. Here's some data about the tree. The eastern island palm closely related to the still surviving Chilean wine palm, which grows up to 82 feet. Divide that by three. What do you have? Uh, about 25 meters tall uh, and six feet in diameter. It's very large, two meters in diameter. The tall, unbranched trunks of the eastern island palm would have been ideal for transporting, rolling the statues, and uh, constructing large canoes. The palm would also have been a valuable food source since its Chilean relative yields edible nuts. So the rats maybe ate the edible nuts too. And Chileans still make sugar, syrup, honey, wine using a palm tree. Diamond says for at least 30,000 years before human arrival and during the early years of Polynesian settlement, Easter was not a wasteland, but was a subtropical forest of trees and woody bushes. So he's describing an Eden destroyed by human beings. Um, and he justifies this by noticing that the Polynesians, their waste products, over time increasingly add less ocean products. So they had difficulty going to this ocean uh, to get porpoises and other fish, and increasingly ate rats. And you can see that in the archaeological record. And this means that uh, he argues it's population crash causing these problems. Let me move forward to the next framework. Number six, another story about the same island. Australian News reports in rewriting the Easter Island story. Some recent research by Terry Hunt, University of Hawaii, Manoa, uh, published in the journal Science on the 10th of March, 2006. And his other piece about rats in the first issue of the Journal of Archaeological Science. The thrust of their article is the settlement of the place may be more recent than we have supposed. So Diamond argued that humans were there since the year 400. But he's saying, no, 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 let's construct this differently. That people only arrived there around 1200. And he also says, some data that Diamond left out was the climate change of the global Little Ice Age cut Easter Island off from the rest of the world and impoverished the place with drought and reduced sea resources. So Diamond interprets the lack of sea resources in their waste products in the archaeological sites as a sign that they can't go to sea. But Hunt describes this not as a sign they can't go to sea but as a sign of a climate change removing the ocean products in general. Says paleobiologist David Stedman of the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville was quoted in the science piece as disagreeing with Hunt's uh, conclusions based on his own research on human influenced animal extinctions. So there's another version. Uh, let's move on to the next version. Here's a version that blames capitalism. No, no, the Easter Islanders actually did have trees until major capitalism, until the Williamson's Balfour Company. So all these ideas that Easter Island was without trees in the year 1500 is false. There were trees. They were destroyed by capitalist-intensive sheep farming. It says the Williamson Balfour Company today referred to as Williamson Balfour Agro-Commercial was a Chilean-based Scottish sheep farming company. When the Chilean government annexed Easter Island in 1888, it was leased to Enrique Relay, who sold his control to this company. They, in turn, created a subsidiary called the Company for the Exploitation of the Island, which ran Easter Island as a sheep farm. And sheep 
destroy all of the ability of trees to regrow. So it's modern capitalist sheep farming that destroyed this and really finished off the trees on Easter Island. It says, during the company's rule and for several years after, the Rapanui people were combined to Hengaroa, which they were not allowed to leave without permission. That's the volcano. They were trapped in the volcano by capitalist rules. In 1953, the Chilean government refused to renew the lease and transfer the island to the Chilean Navy, and the sheep farming operations ceased. In 1966, the Rapanui of Easter Island gained full citizenship. So it's deserted and depopulated only in the past 150 years by governmental decisions and international corporate landlord decisions, not by population problems, not exclusively by rats. Um, a conclusion here by a man named uh, Louis Poirier. Since modern science has conclusively demonstrated a link between greenhouse gases and global warming, other people would say they have not created that clearly. One might think that Diamond would be vigilant about energy companies, the number one malefactor. However, in an interview, Diamond practically falls over himself praising Chevron for environmental sensitivity. So Diamond's attitude is to ignore the organizational origins of environmental problems and instead to concentrate upon population. Um, let's see. I'll go to the very end now. Another person says Diamond is wrong, that there's no example of Diamond's population crash at all. The documented population collapse around when we occurred as a result of European contacts with old world diseases and slave trade. So it's international capitalism bringing diseases that eventually destroyed the rapid wheat and not a natural cycle of population or rats. Um, let's move on to the last quote. Here's one observation. We've looked at almost 10 different constructions of the same empty island. This is what happens with the social construction of the environment. People disagree about how to describe human environmental interactions. And sociologists since the 1980s have analyzed this disagreement about how we talk about the environment. Milton Takai, environmental sociologist, writes, people need to pay more attention to the question of how people know what they know. The farther back in time, the less reliable is our knowledge, and the more social construction can be provided to organize data. Yet some people have raised speculation about prehistorical events to the status of truth, like Easter Island, and made it part of an ideology. So, my challenge to you, which storyline do you overlay on these images? It's an issue that will come up in your thought about environmental issues. You will always construct a particular interpretation of an environmental problem. And this is the social construction of the environment. And it matters for your historical scholarship, your political